How do you know God is a baseball fan? Oh, we read yesterday in the big inning. Ah. Yesterday we read in the big inning, right? Ah, ha, ha. There were two in the big inning. Don't you get it? In the... Now, there was two baseball fans. Alma, you don't know about baseball. It's like cricket. These two guys loved every baseball game they could go to. They went for many, many years. They wouldn't miss a game. So one of them was on his deathbed. Yankel was dying. And, uh, and Schmerl told him, listen, Yankel, when you cross over the other side, you have to come back in a dream and tell me. Tell me, is there a baseball in Gan Eden? Please, I make you swear that after you die, you come back and tell me if there's baseball in Gan Eden. You hear? Because without baseball, he can't live. So Yankel dies. After a nice long life, he dies. Three days later, he comes to Shmerel in a dream. He says, Yankel, Yankel, oh, tell me. So Yankel says, listen, Shmerel, I have good news for you and bad news. What do you want to hear first? Of course, the good news. So he tells him, the good news is there is baseball in Gan Eden. So Shmerel says, Yankel, what's the bad news? The bad news is you're pitching next. The good news is there is baseball, but the bad news is you're pitching next, okay? That's not, that's not appropriate to say after all those refugees. Okay. <laughs> okay. Starting pitcher on the all star team in the sky, these nuns were taking their uh, vows by J.C. Penney, and they actually, Mother Superior gives them wedding bands, not a joke, Beryl. At a ceremony when nuns become indoctr indoctrinated, they take their marriage vows for Yoshka, and the mother superior hands out wedding bands. Not a joke, Beryl. So in the middle of this ceremony, a group of Hasidim walk in. So the mother superior says, what are you dirty Jews doing here in the middle of this holy ceremony? The Hasidim said, we are from the Hassan side. <laughs> Don't you get it? <laughs> J.C. Penny. One of our boys. Okay, that's enough. Okay. We know that the end of the parsha always has to connect to the beginning of the parsha. David never fails. The end of the parsha connects to the beginning of the parsha. The parsha begins Bereshis Bara. God created the universe, right? And he saw his work and he said, Tov Ma'od. It's not good, it's very good. And the end of the parsha says, Vayenochem Hashem ki oses Adam ba'aretz. God, Vayenochem, what does Vayenochem mean? Comfort. Took comfort that he created the human on the earth and not on heaven, because Rashi said if, if he created the human on heaven, he would have read, led the angels in rebellion. So God was comforted, he only created the human on the earth. The human was so corrupt and evil that was an achama for God that he created the human in the Oretz and not in Shemayim because if he created him in heaven, Yiddish, Dr. Abraham said he would have led the angels in rebellion against God. So God took comfort. But he's at elibo and God was depressed. That's what it says. Atsuv in Hebrew means to be depressed. God was depressed in his heart. Mayoim Hashem emchet Adam. Why was God depressed? I have to destroy mankind. I have to destroy mankind. So the question is, if God knows the future, why did he bother to create the human being in the first place? Didn't he know, Abraham, that he what? He's going to destroy mankind? God could have saved himself the trouble. Right? The angels told him not. What? The angels told him not. We told you so. So why is he depressed? Doesn't he know the future? Doesn't he know that he will have to destroy his handiwork? A. So why is he depressed? And B. Why did he bother to? He knew it's not going to work out. And more important, what's the message for us? So the B'nai Yisoska, my great, great Elta Zayda, says something incredible. God loves the human being so much. God wrote about himself that what? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. God knew it's going to not work out. So why bother? Doesn't he know the future? 
and write that he's depressed? The message is that everybody fails, but don't let it get you down. You pick yourself up and you what? Start over, starting over. So you hear, this is the message that plan B is also good. God knew it's not going to work, but he wrote it about himself, Kaviyochel, that his plan A didn't work out to give people courage. That if it doesn't succeed, try, try again. And plan B is also good. Because Noah was plan B. Plan A didn't work out. Plan A was Adam. Did it work out? Plan B is Noah. It didn't work out, right? Oh, uh, David, you must have ESP. Ooh, there's a pasuk in Mishlei, Sheval Yipal Tzadik, the Tzadik falls seven times. So why is he a Tzadik? Become. Because he gets up. Everybody falls. But what do you do after the fall? Do you lay in the blotter? God started over. He rolled up his big sleeves, Kaviochal, and he started over to teach that what? That every Yerida letzarech aliyah. So God wrote about himself that his plan A didn't work out to demonstrate his love for humanity. Plan A seldom works out. Plan B is oichid gut, and perhaps that's the way it should have been. Then you also told us about the Baal Sheva Yipal the come that only after you fall seven times and you get up, only then are you considered what? A tzaddik. Nachon? Only then are you considered a tzaddik. So if you don't succeed at first, try again. Now we know that the Torah always speaks to current events. Sonia, never fails. You read the Torah, you don't have to buy a Jerusalem Post. Never fails. The Torah that we read yesterday, Yeshaya Novi says, Kini Hashem He quotes God, I am Hashem your God. Kedosh Yisrael Mashiachah. I am the Holy One of Israel. I am your Savior. I have made Egypt your kapara. Rip from today's headlines. The Muslim Brotherhood, the worst Jew haters terrorist. Could we do what General Sisi is doing to them? John Balkari would be all over us. But General Sisi and the, and the Egyptian army they are mowing down these terrorists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and cutting off their funding. They're doing Israel's job for them. The God says to Isaiah 2,800 years ago, Notati koflachom etzrayim. I will make Egypt your kapara. That instead of the IDF killing the Muslim terrorists, we would, John Balkari would not allow that. We'd be condemned. So the Mitzri army, is our kapara. They suffered the casualties on the war of terror. They've eliminated thousands of Muslim terrorists. Egypt. Does John Kerry say boo? No. Does the world say boo? No. But imagine if Israel would kill one Muslim Brotherhood terrorist. Oh. 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 Balkari would have a heart attack. Oh. Avram Berkowitz, it's That's amazing that you should... It's just amazing, Mr. Heinowitz, that the, the Torah ripped from today's headline. God says to the prophet, I am your savior, Yidin. I will make Egypt your kapara. The Egyptian army will do the dirty work for you, Yidin. That your blood won't be spilled. Hundreds of Egyptian soldiers have been killed. Hundreds on the war on terror. But thousands of Muslim terrorists have been eliminated. Ripped from today's... Beryl, it's unbelievable. Ripped from today's headlines. When you read this Haftorah 2,800 years ago, what did it mean? Yeah. In fact, Hamas is worried about... Mm -hmm. the They're next. <clears throat> Hamas is shivering in their boots that once General Sisi of the Egyptian army they may, gets finished with the local terrorists he's going to go after <laughs> our peace partners. And that the Balkari will remain mum. Right? Egypt can kill terrorists nonstop. But if we dare to try to defend ourselves, condemnation, aggressors. 
So God says, Moshiach, I am your savior. Yesterday's Torah, God says, I am the Holy One of Israel. Moshiach, I am your savior because I have made Egypt your kapara. It's just unbelievable. Instead of the IDF spilling their blood, the Egyptian army suffers the casualties on the war on terror. You've got to read the Jerusalem Post on Friday. There's a civil war going on between the Egyptian army and the Muslim Brotherhood terrorists who are the worst Jew haters. Hamas learned from them. Baruch Hashem. Okay? Baruch Hashem, right? Now, Baresh is Bara. The Mishnah says in Masech to Avot, Hafokba, Bafokba, the Kulaba. Keep turning it over and keep turning it over. Everything you want to know about science, history, it's all in the Torah. You just have to what? Know where to look. The Rashis Bara says the Zohar, there's a Posuk in Tilim 111. We say it every morning. Rashis Chachma Yirat Hashem. Mm -hmm. Psalm 111 says the Zohar, the Rashis Chachma. God created the world through Chachma. Because King David says, Reshit Chachma. That Reshit is a synonym for Chachma. So God created the universe not in the big inning, get it? <laughs> but the Chachma. Says the, the Zohar, Chachma is an acronym. You know what an acronym means? CIA, FBI, NYPD. Chachma is an acronym for Koachma. Koach Ma, says the Zoya 2,000 years before Einstein. God created the universe by Koach Ma. Koach means energy. Ma means, what's the matter? Energy became matter. 2,000 years before Albert Einstein. Says the Zohar Kodosh Rashbi, Bereish is Bechokma. Chokma is the letters Koach. First, God created energy, and that energy he converted into what? Ma. What does Ma mean? Avra Maze. What's the matter? Matter. Get it? Koach Ma. The the Oasis of what? Chokma. Kowinki Dinky. Ooh, this is the Zohar. In Bereshis, in chapter 1, on the word Bereshit. You hear this, uh, David? Where I came today. Chochma, Bereshit, Chochma, Yerosh Hashem. Chochma is the letters Koach Ma. Koach, first God created energy, and then he converted the energy into Ma. Ma means mass, matter. Isn't that incredible? Maybe Einstein learned this in the Zohar. Maybe. You never know. It gets better. Shamayim. I mean, you can spend an entire year, Zalman, on Pasha's Bereshis. A year you wouldn't scratch the surface. Shamayim. So the Ramban quotes the Medrash. Shamayim is an acronym, NYPD, A Shamayim. Shamayim is an acronym. A Shamayim. What does A Shamayim mean? Fire and water. That the, the energy converted to matter. What kind of matter? Shomayim. Eshumayim. What's Eshumayim? That's the nebula. Fiery liquid gas. All the scientists say that the beginning of creation was the nebula. Everything evolved from a fiery liquid gas. How do you say fiery liquid gas in Hebrew? Shomayim. Eshumayim. What does Eshumayim mean? A fiery water. A fiery water, Eshumayim, that's the fire liquid gas. That all scientists say that was the beginning, that was the matter. And the Ramban in the year 1265, Nechama, already wrote that the Koach Ma, the original matter, was Shamayim, which scientists call the cosmic soup. And from that, the universe used the word evolved. That's next week's shear, you gotta come. Next week's shear is that God used evolution to create Adam. Ooh, shocking. Did God use evolution to create Adam? So that's a cliffhanger for next Sunday. You'll be shocked at the answer. They have Mara Macomo sources. 
to prove that God did in fact use guided evolution to create Adam. But science has nothing to fear, buddy, from the Torah. Hafokba, vafokba, the kulaba. Everything is in the Torah, even evolution. What about the six billion? What about we say that the world was created in what? Six thousand years ago, right? What? Six thousand years ago? Scientists say it was six billion years ago. Sonia, how could that be right? The Ramban says, when it speaks about six days, it's speaking about Yom HaShal HaKudosh Baruch Hu. Yom HaShal HaKudosh Baruch Hu, says the great Nachmanides. Six days from whose perspective? Einstein's theory of relativity. Six days from whose perspective, Avraham? Psalm 91 says, Ki elef shonim be'enecha ki yom et mo. What does that mean? Uh, that doesn't mean a thousand, a million years in your eyes, God, is like what? One day. So the great Nachmanli is writing in the year 1265. Yiddish, Dr. Abelson, writes, when he speaks about six days of Kodesh Baruch Hu, it's speaking from God's perspective. Again, the Einstein relativity. It's relative. From God's perspective, Yom HaShem Kodesh Baruch Hu, Psalm 91. Yes, from God's perspective, it was six days. From our perspective, it was six billion years. Is there a contradiction? Ask Einstein. Relativity. Whose perspective are you looking at? Oh. What? Some people say, don't confuse me with the facts. Okay? Beautiful, a mustard seed. That's right. That's the Healy. The Big Bang. It's the Big Bang theory. And that evolved into a cosmic soup. He writes about that. Look in the, in the Ramban. You can get an English translation by Rabbi Ch Dr. Charles Chaval, a very good translation, where you see he writes there about the fire, liquid, gas, the nebula, and he writes about the guided evolution of man. That's next week's uh, talk. But it's amazing that. We have nothing to fear from science. Science and the Torah, they, they get along beautifully. You just have to know what's all about. Now it says, Vayar Elohim Kitov. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. What's good? Hmm? God surveyed debris and he said, Hey, check it out. It's really good. I mean, does that make sense, Beryl? A human artist creates a masterpiece. He steps back and he says, hey, that's pretty good. You know? What does it mean, buddy? God saw that it was good. What's the message? Says the Tzav uh, Hagbala, a tree Mecklenburg, who lived in the 1700s. If you know Hebrew, Vayar is written in the Hifil. However, you know Hebrew better than me. Vayar is written in the Hifil. Causative. Vayar Elohim means God made to be seen. He brought into existence. It's causative. Vayar Elohim, comma. You have to know where to put the commas. Remember I told you about eating grandpa. You got to know where to put the commas. Let's eat grandpa. I don't want to eat grandpa. Let's eat grandpa. Vayar Elohim, says the Ksav HaGbala. God caused the creation to be seen. He brought it into existence. Why did he do that? Kitov. Because? Because what? Who's good? He is good. It's not the goodness of the world we're talking about. It's the goodness of God. God is teaching us what it means to be good. What it means to be good is to give. God is constantly giving. The world is not an automatic pilot. Because Yeshayo tells us in the Avtorah, Yeshayo tells the Torah, Koyomer El Hashem Bore. What does Bore mean? Cre it, creation is an ongoing process. We say, David, the world is not automatic pilot. God is constantly creating. It's an ongoing process. God is constantly giving. The breath of life, call on Shama to hallelujah. That's the last possible continuum. 
And we know saving best for last. Akran, Akran, Chavit. That's why we repeat it. Kol an Shavit, Haliyah, Hallelujah means Kol Nishima, Venishima. Every time you breathe, it's what? It's a, a gift from God. It's not automatic pilot. Every time you breathe, it's another gift God is constantly giving. Bore, not bara, says the prophet. So therefore, God is, why did God bring creation into being? Bayar, he made it be seen. Kitov, because what? He's good. The Torah is teaching us what it means to be good. To be good means to give. The root of the word ahava, love, is have. Have in Aramaic means what? To give, not to take. So God is teaching us what it means to be good is to give. And therefore, God says as follows. God says as follows. It's not good for the human to be alone. It's not good for the human to be alone. Why is it not good? Because if he's alone, he can't give. With no wife to love, no family to raise, he can't be good. It's not, man can't be good if he's alone. Because he has no one to express his goodness to. And if he can't be good, he can't be godlike. And if he can't be godlike, who needs him? Therefore, the first mitzvah in the Torah is what? Why? That's the act of giving. That's the act of giving. We have to give. The woman's role is to receive. It's no kumiki dinky that man gives the sperm and woman receives. It's much more than that. Man has to give. The job of the wife is to receive and to nurture it. Therefore, under the chuppah, Avram, what does she do under the chuppah, Avram? She circles him. She's circling the wagons. She is protecting him. She takes that seed and she nurtures and protects it. But that's a symbol for woman's role as opposed to man. He's the giver to act like God, to give. But if he's not married, he can't be good with no wife to love, no one to give, no one to share. So the act of getting married is the act of what? Imitating God. Creation. The Talmud says in every birth of a child, there are what? Three partners. God contributes to soul. I'm a soul man. And husband and wife contribute what? The body. So the act of marriage is imitating God. It's v'halachta bedrachav. Avram, what's the purpose of a yid? To walk in God's way. So getting married has to be the first mitzvah. Oh. Eseloi ezer kenegdo. I will make him a helper who will be against him. Seems to be a contradiction. If she's a helper, then she's not against him. And if she's against him, how is she a helper? So Rashi quotes the Talmud, Zoha Ezer, Loi Zoha Kenegdoy Lehelochem. If a person has merit, if he's a good, he's a mensch, his wife will help him all the way. Loi Zoha, but if the husband is not a mensch, Kenegdoy Lehelochem. Right? She is only a reflection of what? Of him. You know, why does the uh, chosen break the uh, glass under the chuppah, Avram? It's the last time he'll get a chance to put his foot down. Last chance to put his foot down. Ah, huh? uh, What? The last two words, I do. Yes, dear. Oh. Now, I have a, another shot. Ezer Kenegdo, she helps him by being against him. Ooh, stay tuned. Ezer Kenegdo, can a person see his own flaws and character defects? Everybody thinks that what? I'm okay, you're not okay. No one sees their own nega. Even a Cohen who had a nega couldn't examine his own nega. He had to go to a fellow Cohen. 
So the Talmud says a person cannot see his own nega. That's not, not just a physical defect. But a person is not capable of judging himself properly. He always biased. I, there's nothing wrong with me. The only one that can point out his character flaws and defects is the better half. Azer Kenegdo, she helps him by being against him, by pointing out his flaws and character defects and his faults. She helps him. Constructive criticism. Therefore, the word for wife in Hebrew, Isha, is Gematria Musar. Who's good in math? Alef Shin Hei is 306. That's the same Gematria of the word Musar. Musar means what? Rebuke. The job of a wife, Zalman, is what? Rebuke. To rebuke her husband. Ooh. But the word rebuke is also Gematria Devash. Isha's Gematria Devash. Therefore, you call your wife honey. Not a joke. <laughs> Rav Chaim Pinsker Scheinberg, Zechus Tzadik Avracha, called his wife honey. The great Tzadik Ador called his wife honey. Isha Gematria Devash. But Isha is Gematria Musar. But the Musar has to be given what? In a sweet way. Otherwise it's counterproductive. Wow. Only a wife can smooth over the husband's rough edges. But in a sweet way. So she helps him dafke by, by being what? Against him. Hmm. Does that mean the wife is perfect? Does that mean the wife is perfect? Yes. Right? <laughs> the wife is... Didn't God say to Sarah, to Abraham? Whatever Sarah tells you to do, Shema Bekola. And the Talmud says, if you're very tall and your wife is short, bend down to her. What does that mean? It means if you're very tall, you're a great tzaddik in spiritual heights, and she's not on your level, bend down and listen to her. Because women have a bina yetera, which even the greatest rabbi doesn't have. Women have a bina yetera. They're created. Why do they have a bina yetera? Look at Abraham was fooled by Yishmael. Yitzchak was fooled by Esav. Was Sarah fooled by Yishmael? She saw right through Abu Mamzer. Even though he wears a three-piece suit, she saw right through him. And Esav was fooled by whom? Yitzchak. Rivka saw right through him. Women have this bina yitera. They can see right through. You know why, Rabbi Yaakov? Because where were they created from? We learned yesterday. God didn't take a pinky from Adam or a nose. He took from an inside limb, an inside organ. What do you call the rib? It's from the inside. So women can see right through to the inside because they were taken from an internal place. What do you call a rib? Organ, cell, what? Bone. But it's not the nose or the pinky. It's from inside, so women have this uncanny ability, Mr. Heinewitz, to see through the, the deception, which even the greatest rabbis can't see. That's the bina yitera that they have. Wow. I heard that if a wife thinks a friend is not good for her husband, she tells him he has to listen. He has to listen, but she has to give him the reason why. But again, she has to do it in a sweet way. She cannot order him. Right? She has to say, let's talk it over. It's not good for your spiritual progress. Nahon? Now God says, Nasa Odom Bitsalmenu. Let us make man. So a lot of people, the Christians like this verse, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why does God say Nasa Odom Bitsalmenu? Right? So Rashi says this teaches the humbleness, humility. That God was, so to speak, consulting his pamalya shomala. Does God need to consult with the, with the malachim? It teaches humility. Even though you're the big boss, give the courtesy to consult with your what? underlings. Give them the kavod. So God writes about himself that he is consulting the uh, malachim to teach their acherets. Even though you're the big boss and you know everything. Give your workers dignity. 
Make them feel important, Rabbi Yaakov. So God writes about himself, Nasa Odom, to teach Derech Eretz, Kodmal Torah. The Ramban has another interpretation, Beryl. Nasa Odom, who's God speaking to? Mother Earth. Let us make man, you Mother Earth, supply the body, and I will supply the Tselem Elohim. Isn't that beautiful? The great Nachmanides. Nasa and Samenu, in partnership, you, earth, supply the body, and I will supply the tzelem elohim. The Ram says he was speaking to man because we're partners in our own creation. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And to make this point, Sharona, thank you for reminding me, Bereshis Bara. So the famous Kasha that Rashi asked, why did the Torah begin with Bereshis Bara? The Torah is not a science book. It's not a history book. It's a book of laws, of teaching. The Torah should have began with Exodus 12. That's the first mitzvah, Kiddush HaChodesh. So why did the Torah begin with Bereshus? With creation. So Rashi answers what he answers, right? Koach Masav Higid La'amo, Wosam Nachas Goyim. If the EU and the UN will condemn us that we are occupying Arab land, we're occupiers and aggressors, so we point to, we point to Bereshus. That what God created the world and He gave us this land. We're not occupying anybody's land. The Creator apportioned every throw to us. So that's what Rashi answers. But that begs the question. The question was the Torah is a book of teaching, of laws. It's not how to win debates at the UN. So what? To teach that the world is created by God. And we are not occupying anybody's land. Eretz Yisrael belongs to us. So what? But Rashi is not answering his question, David. How does that teach laws? So the answer is incredible. Rav gave this explanation also. Yes, the Torah is a book of laws. But before God can command to do mitzvot, God has to tell me the venue. Bereshis tells us the promised land. I can't command you to do a mitzvah before I give you, what's the word, venue? Where's the venue found? In Bereshis. Koch Masav Higid Lamo. That Eretz Yisrael, that's the place where mitzvahs have to be done. So before God can command the mitzvah, he has to give me the address. The address is found where? Throughout Genesis. Over and over again, God promises the land to Avram Yitzhak to Yaakov. So we're not aggressors, we're not stealing anybody's land. Yes, it's a book of mitzvot. But before you can do a mitzvah, I have to give you the address. And that address is Eretz Yisrael. But the Sharon is referring to another explanation of Rav Salavechik. Yes, Torah is a book of mitzvot. Beresh is bara, mahu afata. God creates, we have to create. Children, talmidim, mitzvahs and mice and toivim. Beresh is bara, it's a mitzvah. So the first mitzvah in the Torah is what, Rav Zalman? Create. Get married and create. So it's not science or history. God creates on an ongoing basis. So we have to continue to create, produce children, grandchildren, talmidim, mitzvah samas and toivim. Right? God continues to create. As the prophet says, Boresh shamayim, not bara. So we have to follow his lead because v'halachta bedrachav. All the mitzvahs are all about v'halachta bedrachav. Mahu afata. We're supposed to imitate the boss. We're here to imitate the boss. It's pretty interesting. Now, so God asked the woman, what did you do? And he asked Adam, so Adam passes the buck. He says it's her fault, right? The woman that you gave me, she is the one that gave me the fruit. Vo'ochel. What does vo'ochel mean? Eight would be vachalti. Can't always trust the English, Rabbi Yaakov. Vo'ochel means, and I will continue to eat. English translates, and I ate. But I ate would be vachalti. He says, I will continue to eat. Look, it's mind-boggling. 
you gave me free will, and I will exercise it, even to defy you. A, re a rebellious kid talks like that, right? The, 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 the parents take away his car keys, so he's defiant, right? I will continue to eat. Isn't that incredible? What? Oil ma fukhraiti. Right? Vo ochel means that I will eat. Vechalti, but anyway. Vo ochel means that I will eat. Not not vechalti. I will continue to eat. Right? That's right. Nochon? Pasuk yud bet. Pasuk yud bet. But Rashi doesn't say, he just says he's a kafatov. tov. He denies the good. God gave him a wonderful companion. And instead of appreciating her, he blames her. He blames her. Instead of taking what? Responsibility. Nahon? He blames her. Interesting, right? Right? Actually, he blames God. He says, well, you gave You gave me. That's right. That's right. It's your fault, right? It's your fault, right? Now. So they made themselves fig leaves, it says, the latest fashion, right? They made themselves fig leaves. And then it says that what? God made for them kosnas or. God made for them jackets of leather. Hey, the fans. Remember the fans? <laughs> Beryl, it says kosnas or. God made them leather jackets. Vroom, the bikers, right? Vroom. That's what it says, David. He made them jackets of leather. Vayal Bishem, shall he, and he dressed them. Now, they were not children. They were able to dress themselves with the fig leaves. Right? So why did God have to dress them? They were already dressed. The fig leaves. So the Zoya says when you dress somebody, you have to embrace him. To teach that even after they sinned and they defied God, God lovingly, tenderly, the rest of he embraced them. Because God's love is unconditional. Like a parent's love. Even the child is rotten and rebellious. I can't stop loving you. Isn't that amazing? So the Zohar says, Vayal Bisham. Of course they can dress themselves, Avram. They dress themselves fine in the, the latest fashion, the fig leaves. But when you dress someone, you have to embrace them. So God lovingly embraced them to teach that his love is unconditional. Now, he made them jackets of leather. Skin. Or, or means leather, skin. Right? Cowhide, right? Leather. Rawhide. Or, jackets of skin. But the Zoyar says that the word or is... But why did he need to do it? They were already dressed. So the Zohar says you could read the word or, it's written with an ayin, you can read it with an aleph. He made them jackets of light. The body was covered with fig leaves, but the godly soul was exposed. Fashamed. So God lovingly made them kosnas or of light to hide the shame of the neshama. Or is written with an ayin, but it could be read with an aleph too. You hear what the Zoya says? So God made for them jackets. There's a store on Fifth Avenue that's called Lord and Taylor. I'm going to tell you a true story. It's not a joke. Lord and Taylor is a famous store like Saks Fifth Avenue. It was founded about 100 years ago by a Yiddle that came from Poland, a Schneider. A Yiddish Schneider who came from Poland, a Chayat, a Schneider, a Taylor. And he called this store Lord and Taylor because of this pasuk. The Lord became a tailor. He made nice leather jackets for, not the fans. Hey. Adam and Chava, hear this? That's why he called his store Lord and Taylor. The Lord was a tailor for Adam and Chava. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a joke. I read it. Lord and Taylor. I eat the cup. Lord was the first tailor. <laughs> Genesis 3, plus 20. Lord and Taylor. Could a guy figure that out? 
Never. There's, I think they're bigger than Saks Fifth Avenue, I think. Uh -huh. hmm? Yes. They sold their fig leaves. It says that what? They, they sold for them. They sold fig leaves for themselves. And they made themselves fig leaves uh, chagurot, coverings. So why did God have to make jackets for them and dress them? They were already dressed. Where did the needle come from? They found it in a haystack. <laughs> Don't you get it? They found the needle in a haystack. Uh, hmm? It says they sewed fig leaves together. You're right. Where did the needle come from? They must have bought it in Lord and Taylor. No, well, good question. Says Rashi doesn't deal with it, where they got the needle from. What? Yeah. He waited until they were clothed, and then he what? And then he, he confronted them. So he called his wife, Chava. But he called them Shem Ishto Chava. Ki he hoite aim kol He didn't call her Stacy. He called her Chava, because she was the mother of all living beings. So Evan Ezra asked, if that's the case, he should have called her my sister's name. Chaya. What did he call her Chava for? Adam called his wife Chava, ki hi hoi te aim kol chai. She was the mother of all living human beings. So her name should have been what? Chaya. So Rashi says that the Yud and the Vav interchange. But that just begs the question. Why not call her Chaya? So the Evan Ezra says, he didn't want a lover's quarrel. Who are you calling a beast? You beast. Evan Ezra says that. He didn't want no lover's quarrel right from the get-go. So instead of calling her Chaya, he called her uh, Chava, which is a take on the word Chaya. Okay? But I have another interpretation. Chava in Hebrew, what's the word Chava mean? There's a postage in Tilam 19. Yechave dat. Yechave, it's the same root. Yechave dat. Means to give over. To communicate, to influence others. You hear? Who is the first teacher of a child? It's the mother. He called her Chava. Yechava dat, it's your responsibility. Even when the child is in the womb. These great rabbis, this couple came to a great rabbi and they, the child was born. And they asked, when does Chinuch begin? So the great rabbi said, you're too late. Chinuch begins when the child is still in the womb of the mother. It's incredible. Yechave dat. It's up to the wife to impart, give over, communicate knowledge. Before the Rebbe gets to her or the father, nine months in her uh, womb, the way she behaves, it influences the child. You know, they play music for the fetus. It reacts. Sad music, happy music. The way the mother, if she's in a good mood or in a bad mood, it sees Yechave dat even while the fetus is still inside of a womb, and therefore he called her Chava, which means to impart knowledge. It's pretty interesting, pretty amazing, right? Now, so God kicked out Adam and Chava from Gan Eden, and it says, Vayashken mikedem leGan Eden esakruvim. God turned, uh, kicked them out, and he put the Keruvim there. La tacherev. What does that mean? A flaming sword, hamishapechet, that keeps turning. What does that mean? Malachim need a sword, Abraham. What's it all about? The Keruvim need a flaming sword to keep the way to the Derech Eitzach Hayim? A Malach can just eh, zap you. What do you need a sword for? So the Zoyer says something. I'm over 40. We can talk, right? The Zoyer says that's not shot. The Zoyer says as follows. Incredible. If you look, if you look at the Gemara Sanhedrin, page 67, the word Lahat, which the English translates, Avram Berkowitz, as flaming. If you look in Sanhedrin 67, the word lahat, if you look in Pasha's Ve'era, it 
It says the magicians did magic tricks. Bilotehem. What does Bilotehem mean? With their deception. The Ramam says it was a deception. They hypnotized people to think that they are actually turning the stick into what? A snake. It was mass hypnosis. Pasha the era says Sharona, Bilotehem, which means deception. Mass hypnosis. Hallucination. That's the Ramam learns. They can't turn a stick into a snake. The Egyptians, the sorcerers. So Bilotehem means with deception. Which means uh, deception, which means what, Rabbi Yaakov? Hallucination. Says Sanhedrin 67, and the Zoya, the word lahat is the same root as Bilotehem. Fasten your seatbelts for this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Cherev is the symbol of what? Death. So the Zoya says, based on this Gemara, on Hedbin 67, Cherev is the symbol of death, right? Lahat Cherev. Death is only an illusion. Death is the greatest deception. You think that the person is kaput. He's rotting in the ground. But that's lahat. The cherev, the symbol of death. Misapechet. What does misapechet mean? Turns around. Lishmor derech eitzachayim. Death is the great deception, the great hallucination. Cherev is the deception. But death turns the person into the derech eitzachayim. What does derech eitzachayim mean? Life after death. The Ramam says that the word Eitzachayim in Tanakh is a synonym for life after life. So the Keruvim are this way your table's waiting. They're the waiters. What? They're the waiters. They're the waiters. Ooh. Yiddish, as Zora says, when a person dies, hair is a symbol of death. It looks like he's finished, but that's Lahat. That's a deception, an illusion. Hamisapeches, the hair of death turns them over to these Keruvim, that they lishmor, they guard the way for him to the Eitzachayim. Eitzachayim is a symbol. The t- Rabbah says, throughout Tanakh, there are many metaphors for life after life. Beis Hashem, but one of the metaphors is what? Har Hashem, and one of the metaphors is what? Eitzachayim. So death is the great deception, the great hallucination. It looks like the person is kaput. But that's only his body suit. He is now in the Eitzachayim. And the Malachim, the Kruvim, they escort him to his proper, this way your table's waiting. Everyone has a reservation. Eh? Hmm? Pretty amazing, right? Not? Pretty interesting. Now, the Keruvim here are called Malachi Chabala. Malachi Chabala, hell's angels. In Parshish Truma, they're called Kodesh Kadoshim. Rashi, make up your mind. Here you're calling the Keruvim Malachi Chabala, hell's angels. In Parshish Truma, you call them what? Heavenly angels. What are the Malachim? What are they? Heavenly angels or hell's angels? What? The Kruvim. What are they? You make the call. You hear? Da malamala mimcha. If you want to know what's going on up there, says the Chaim Velazhin, the Mishnah, mimcha. Whether the Malachim are Malachi Chabala or whether they are Kodesh HaKadoshim, whether the angels are heavenly angels or hell angels, it's up to you the awesome power of a human being to affect not just the physical world, but to affect what? The spiritual world. Ooh, wait a minute. I just got a telegram. Wait a minute. Who? It's, it's just incredible that the malachim are a reflection of what? Of our actions down here. Right? Hashem Tzilcha. King David says, David, God is your shadow. Tzalem Elohim. The shadow does what you do. 
God said, it's up to you. Don't ruin my world. He begged Adam. Don't ruin my world. This and the next world. Rabbi Yaakov Kavaretsky is Atzal. Rabbi Aaron, then you'll say. He says, the Kruvim had the faces of Kindalach. You got to hear this, David. The Kruvim had the faces of a kind, a boy child and a girl child. Why the face of Kindalach? Fasten your seatbelts. In, in. Says, Rabbi Yaakov Kavaretsky, Zechot Salih You hear this, Mr. Heinewitz? Unbelievable. He said, our children... If they're attached to the Oron, what does the Oron represent? Torah values. Then our children are Kodesh Kadoshim. But if God forbid our children are not attached to the Oron, then Lo Yelenu, they become Malachi Chabala. Oy, oy, oy. Rav Yaakov Zatzal, my Rebbe. Why face of children? Because if your children are attached to Torah values, the Oron, you give them a proper Chinuch, they're Kodesh Kadoshim. But if you don't attach them to the Aaron, you disengage them from the Aaron, the Torah values, and Loyalenu, you're turning your children into Malachi Chabala. Oi, vai, vai. Now your turn. I just, you, you mentioned the, the fact of uh, how the word Lahat was the transformation from being uh, deception. Deception. Death is a great deceiver. So what you had is the Malachim. Go ahead. Go ahead. This was as if they were in the afterlife. Once they were evicted, Chava were evicted. They were evicted. What happened was the Kruvim now prevented them. They, that was the, the, the illusion right. of death. Okay. In other words, now death became an illusion to them. That's right, because they were supposed to live forever. The life that they were living was inside. That's right. By being outside now, they are. So they took eternity for granted. Exactly, 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 exactly. They didn't appreciate it. You get everything handed on a silver platter, a welfare check, you don't appreciate it. When do you appreciate it? When it's taken away from you and you work for it. The Talmud says that Adam and Chava became closer to God after the sin. Because the Tzadigomer can't reach that. So only after Adam and Chava fell, Shevel Yipol Tzadik become, did they appreciate what's waiting for them on the other side. But they took eternity for granted. It's a posuk and micha. If I wouldn't have sat in darkness, I would never appreciate the light. So there has to be darkness, everyone suffers. To appreciate the magic moments, not to take them for granted. You know the story. This guy, Chosid, went to his Rebbe. And he had nine kids and lived in a one-room house. He said, Rebbe, I can't take it. I have nine kids and I live in a one-room house. So the Rebbe said, listen to me. Take your goat into the house and come back in a week. He said, Rebbe, what are you talking about? There's nine kids in the house, one room house. You have to take the goat in. I'm your Rebbe, do as you're told. Take the goat into the house and come back in a week. Comes back in a week. He says, Rebbe, I can't take it anymore. The goat, the goat and the kids are going nuts. So the Rebbe says, take the goat out and come back in a week. Comes back in a week. He says, Rebbe, you're a genius. Oh, it's such a nachas now. The goat is gone. Oh, Rebbe, you're a genius. It's so true. You can't appreciate what you have unless what? You lose it. Took the goat out. Now he has more room than ever. Huh? The Rebbe was very kleek. A kleek Rebbe. Yeah. A Yiddish cop, right? It's a true story, by the way. What? That's right. A wanderer. I'm the wanderer. I'm the wanderer. He became a wanderer, right? And who did he marry? It says he married. What? And why did he kill Hevel? So the Talmud says that Cain was born with a female twin. And Hevel was born with two female twins. Mm. 
They fought. Who's going to get the extra female? Kayan said, she's mine because I'm the older brother. Hevel said, get lost. She's born with me. So the first murder in human history was, was over what, David? Over a woman. Isn't that amazing? Over a chick. <laughs> Pretty interesting, huh? Now, pretty interesting, right? What are you thinking? And still today, a lot of murders are committed over what? Who gets the woman, right? A lot of fights and jealousy. So they fought over the extra female twin. That's what the Talmud in Yavamo says. What else were they fighting about? Right? Or what? That was an excuse. But they fought after... Uh, they fought for the... The extra female twin. So the question is, you're not allowed to marry your, your sister. The Torah wasn't given, but it's one of seven Noahide laws, though. Keep the seven, go to heaven. So Rashi asked that question. Rashi said, Oilam chesed yibane. Incest is called in the Torah chesed. Strange, right? Chesed. Incest is called chesed. Says Rashi that even though even Noahides cannot commit incest, but God did a chesed, He allowed this incest. In order the world to be populated. Because if Kai and Hevel wouldn't have married their sister, then who could they marry? So therefore, God had to allow this act of incest, even though it's forbidden for Goyim as well, to allow the world to be populated. But that just begs the question of God made Adam and Chava, he could have created another woman from somewhere else. Why Dafka through the act of incest? Huh? Huh? I think to teach humility, no one can say my yichos is better than your yichos. We all come from the same sh shameful act of incest. No one can lord it over the other guy. My pedigree is better than yours. We all come from incest to keep us humble. What do you got to be stuck up about? You know where you come from? You come from an act of incest. How could you be so arrogant and proud? Down boy. So therefore God made it this way. What? What did you even punish? Who says it punishes a mamzer? A mamzer? No, Shrana, the last Mishnah in Shas, Sech Tehoria says, if the Titanic is sinking and there's one place left on the lifeboat, Avram, and on board there's a Koyan Godel who's an Amoretz. The big kohon and Amoritz. But there's a mamzer who's a Talmud Chochem. A mamzer is a Talmud Chochem. Who gets the last place on the lifeboat? Mamzer. The mamzer. But he can't marry your sister. He can't marry my sister, but he can marry another mamzer. He can be the chief rabbi of Israel. He can't marry a born Jew, but he can marry a ger. He can marry another mamzer. And he gets the last place on the lifeboat before the coin got to Amoritz. The only thing he can't do is marry what? A born Jew. But he's given more respect than a coin godel amoret if he's a Talmud Chacham. So it looks like all of humanity came from what? Incest. Incest. To teach humility. Not to be so arrogant and proud. You know who my Yichus is? Oh, I come from Yichus. Right? Doromelech also comes from incest, right? His uh, Lot and his daughter. And the other side, Boaz. Boaz is a product of Yehuda Vatamar. Oh, yes. Yehuda Vatamar, a father-in-law having sex with a daughter-in-law, even after the son is dead, that's in Jewish law, that's incest. Who was born? Peretz. Peretz is the grandfather of Boaz. So David Amelech is a product of incest. Beit is Can you imagine King David couldn't do a shidduch today? <laughs> He'd go to Meish or him looking for a shidduch. What would the shatkan say? Hmm. Incest from both sides. The mother, Ruth, comes from Lot and the daughter. And his father, Peretz, Boaz, comes from Yehuda Tamar. That's also incest in Jewish law. For a father-in-law to marry a daughter-in-law, even when the son dies, that's incest. So what does God say? Must be the Mashiach. What? Must be. He's, the, he's the Mashiach. <laughs> to teach humility. To teach humility. Right? They can become, they can marry other Mamzerim. The Talmud in Gedushan says, Reb Zalman, that when Mashiach comes, there'll be a general amnesty 
for Mamzer. And Talmud the Gedushin says, when the Messiah comes, there'll be an amnesty program. Like the IRS has amnesty programs. That's what it says. I don't know for how many days. So, Why can't they marry a born Jew? Because the Torah says so. The Torah says they can't marry a born Jew. They can marry a ger or marry another con or a ger or another mamzer. Right? Okay, but that, we don't have that today. But today they marry other mamzer. A ger. Where are their children? What? Children remain mamzerim. If they marry a ger, the children remain mamzerim, but it's not forbidden. Yeah, but we have Kanani today. You got to go to Saudi Arabia, get a white female slave. Saudi Arabia, right? And you marry her, then you purify your seed. You have to go to Saudi Arabia. J day. Mamzer seeks mamzeres, right? They're allowed. The kid remains mamzer, but a ger also. Thank you very much. Next week we have evolution. Did God use evolution to create Adam and Eve? Not Adam and Steve, Adam and Eve.